Hey, what's up, everybody? It's a Saturday, beautiful day in Alice Springs. I hope you're having a good day. Today, what we're going to do is compare some tuna, some different species of tuna that I have here. And it's, it's pretty rare, especially for this bluefin tuna, the belly cut, uh, the fatty belly cut uh, I got here uh, in the middle of pretty much nowhere. And then uh, we're moving down to the yellowtail. I'm sorry, yellowfin yellowfin tuna and then the abercore so out of these three species the bluefin tuna is the largest and the, the more well-known um, tuna that they use in japan especially like in the markets and stuff like that and uh yeah if you don't know about the belly fatty cut oh you've got to look into it it's uh in japanese it's called toro and it's just awesome butter. It should just melt in your mouth. And um, you can really tell the difference. Um, uh, yellowfin is what we're moving down to next is the, the medium sized tuna here. And it has a little bit more color than the abacore, as you can tell here. Abacore is, a, you know, um, abacore, it's, it's good. You know, you, you use it in happy hour tuna. Uh, I'm sorry, happy hour for the tuna sushi or or buffet, um, but uh, most of the time uh, you cut this up, the abacore, to make spicy tuna out of it and put more seasoning and flavors. But um, yeah, today we're gonna portion it out. We're gonna skin it down, more well, the bluefin that is. And then um, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a little tuna tour and see how we go from there. And I'll let you know how the taste is and, and yeah, good stuff. See you soon. So with the side ingredients today, we're pretty much going to have it uh, sashimi style. But uh, the side ingredients I have here ready is the Japanese um, uh, chili powder here. We got some uh, low sodium soy sauce, some sesame oil, some pickled ginger, and we have some kimchi here, chives green onion or known as uh, spring onion here and then some roasted sesame seeds good stuff also on the side here that uh, that's not shown in the camera right now i've also got some of that tasmania salmon going on it's good and fatty and i'll be trimming up the belly part there and and trimming up some some of the edges here and make it sushi ready all right here we go. fatty tuna is so fatty it's so oily it's like all over my hands just look at that look at that oil and fat just 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 shining off of that piece of meat there piece of tuna belly right there wow that's so fatty that's that's the cut you want mmm I mean, look at the underside of the skin. It's just so oily. Oh man, that's that's just oily, fatty omega three goodness right there. See how how that's just glistening. Oh, I just dropped a piece. It's like bacon. Look at that. It's freaking awesome. See, you see all that fat, oily goodness on my knife. Oh man. That's some that's gonna be some really good sashimi right there. All right. 
right, guys, I'm about to bust out the the pickled ginger here. The ones that I could find here are like in pink color. See? It's delicious. Put some on the side there. I want to show you up close what I did here. You see that? See that abacore there? Yeah. That's the smallest, smallest one out of these three tuna. And then as we move up in better quality is the yellow fin. See how it's a little, has a little bit better color going on over there. And then we have the best piece, best cuts. My mouth is getting watery. The best cuts that I have here. And uh, yeah, that's the fatty belly of the bluefin tuna and um, this is this is this is just gonna be like butter i can tell already because uh, when i was cutting it it was just falling apart and it was just so oily dripping down my hand and my knife that's that's what you want to go for so first we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and try it without any kind of soy sauce i've got some low sodium soy sauce here We'll go for the abacore and then in between bites and eating, I will be having a pickled ginger so that it can neutralize my palate as I try to the next sashimi. All right, here we go. This is what I'm going to go for. Go for this, this piece right here. It's kind of pinkish, you know, not quite red. melts in your mouth. It's fresh. It has a little bit grainy, grainy texture to it. It's definitely not fishy. If, if you taste fishy or smell fishy, that sushi or sashimi is not good. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's nice. So I'm going to go ahead and go for some pickled ginger here so I can kind of clear my palate has a pretty strong um, tuna flavor not bad just a little bit strong and again when I say strong it's not fishy it's just that raw tuna goodness something the same texture you would find in like sushi buffet tuna or spicy tuna. We're gonna go for that yellow toe. I'm sorry, I keep saying yellow toe, yellow fin. I, I do miss yellow toe fish. Yeah, I think it's known as the kingfish here. But you see it as the yellow fin has a little bit more red in it. It's a little bit darker than the abacore. That's what I'm gonna try next. And go for this one without any sauce. Mmm. has a smoother texture, not as grainy as the abacore. Also melts in your mouth. They both melt in your mouth, but this texture, you can tell the quality is better from abacore and yellowfin. I gotta make sure I said that right. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna clear my palate. This, this next one, the fatty belly, the fatty tuna, turtle. This is what I've been waiting for all day. My mouth was just watering, thinking about it, cutting it, you know, separating the, the flesh and the bone, the skin. Oh my God, this, this is what I've been going for and uh, this is what I've been waiting for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and go in without any sauce first. Oh man, look at that, <clears throat> that fat. And oily goodness it's like almost dripping off my chopsticks there mmm 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 oh wow that's butter 
all that omega-3 oil. Mmm, I don't even, I don't even want to go for a ginger. That's just goodness right there. Wow. Mmm, buttery, oily. You don't even need sauce. It's just awesome. Mmm. 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 Sorry, I'm just having a moment. That that is just pure delicious. Wow. I will be ordering a lot more of that if they have any available in town. The butcher shop that I got this from is from Milner's uh, here in Alice Springs, and they're just awesome people. Man, they're just really friendly, nice, always helpful. Um, they're the ones that helped me get these three types of tuna together, and it's just absolutely worth waiting for. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off with some soy sauce wasabi. And then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, move on to the next uh, thing that I'll make and put together for you, all right? Check it out. Yeah. Some of that wasabi, soy sauce. Watch it turn to like brown, like hot mustard. Just, it's just like when you eat it, the fumes go through your nose and just want to make you cry like a little girl. Well, it makes Julie cry like a little girl. Don't tell her I said that. Mmm, it's like hot mustard now. Absolutely awesome. Go downgrade to this Abercore. Even with the sauce and wasabi with the Abercore, it's still good, but the graininess in the meat, you can tell it's Abercore. Here's some yellowfin. Mm. The meat texture just melts even better than the abacore. It doesn't have that graininess. Yellowfin is good. Actually, I've experienced the difference now is this word to upgrade to yellowfin rather than just. Plano tuna. Plano tuna isn't like abacore. You know what? I'm not even gonna finish this abacore because I think it's better if you just cut it up and put in spicy tuna or something. Here we go back with the with the yellowfin. Mm. So I stopped the time lapse, but during the time lapse, that Toro fatty tuna was so good I had to crack me open a beer. It's just totally delicious. But I stopped the time lapse because I wanted to actually show you this big piece of fatty tuna I got here and it's just the oil is just glistening off of it. And I wanted to just kind of show you how how oily and fatty it is. Mm. I don't, I don't know if there's any words to describe how delicious that tuna belly is when you got a whole pallet full and it's just, wow.
Let's do that again. Mm. All you need is just a little bit. Oh man. Oh. I can't wait to let Julie try some of this or she might not even know. <laughs> oh, that goodness. Oily, fatty. Mm. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, I had a moment. Mmm. Mm. We'll just chase that with some beer. And then chase it with some pickled ginger. And then some kimchi. Mmm. Woo! Spicy! some extra tuna belly pieces here from when I was portioning off the fatty tuna. Oh, that piece is just solid. Solid tuna fat. Wow. Every time. sushi roll, spicy tuna, and uh, a couple of sushis to finish off this uh, tuna belly. So, yep, I've got my towel underneath my cutting board, safety, I always got my bowl of water, so no sticky rice on the sticky fingers. All right. First thing I'm gonna make, spicy tuna. So there it is. This is going to be inside out sushi, they call it, where the rice is on the outside. So I'll just put some chili powder. And then when I do it inside out, take a piece of plastic here and cover the rice side. So I won't stick on my bamboo roller. Get nice. Spicy tuna going on here. Get it nice and neat and organized. So I'll put a couple more right in the middle and I'm not gonna bring it all the way to the edge because I know from the inside it's going to Squeeze right out to the sides as soon as I roll it up like this. Roll it up. And then make sure you grab the plastic 
and then continue rolling and to make it tight you gotta grab the bottom of the bamboo roller along with the top where the sushi is pull it out from underneath leaves it nice and tight there it is and you always this is why you always want that bowl of water on the side so you can get your your knife nice and moist sorry my mouth is just getting watery again just looking at this spicy tuna roll that we're making here there it is and always clean your knife keeps it from getting the um, dried up fish or rice to dry on it and uh, since we cut it up and it looks kind of messy again just go right over it with the bamboo roller again and then it'll become straight and nice again and this is when you just get the plastic out from underneath there you have it get your fingers wet again and then you have yourself a nice spicy tuna roll chopstick yep. there we have it nice small and tight see what I mean this is why I put the chili powder on the outside nice and tight little sushi just a one biter very nice mmm chase that with some pickled ginger Excellent. It's with this tuna belly. It's the scrapings of the tuna belly and it's the most fattiest is because it's between the skin and the bones. But I'm gonna make like little little couplings so we put it in there. It's, I don't know what that's called in um, Japanese or that type of sushi. But I'll show you here in just a minute. So you get these seaweed strips here, like that. They're about an inch and a half in width. I have to grab some sushi rice. And normally I just do this with, uh, when I roll up the rice, it's just with one, one hand, so I can have one hand free, right? So again, you don't want too much rice. And so I just make it kind of like in a sushi ball like that. And here it is up close, just like that. And then I get this strip and there's a smooth side and a rough side. And you have a leftover flap like that. So what you do is you get it just a little bit of rice. You smear it at the end just to make it stick. See? And then you just get your finger kind of push down the rice there. And you got yourself a little, little sushi cup going on there. And from there, if you want, <clears throat> traditionally, put a little bit of wasabi inside. I only got this tube. This is the only thing I'm working with out here. And then scoop yourself some of that, that goodness sushi. Put it right in. Put it right in there. There it is. Then you got yourself... Nice, good looking scooper there. Nice little sushi there, but I'm gonna top it off with some chives. See there? Some chives, a little bit of sesame. There it is, and going right in. Doesn't get fresher than that. Mm.
excellent. All right, let's say if you had all the ingredients and then like you were hungry, you had sushi rice, you had the fish, everything, just make a hand roll. Basically, hand roll is just like half a sheet of um, sushi. Just a little bit of rice, spread it across there. Again, I try not to use too much rice in sushi rolls or anything like that. I like to keep a really thin layer of rice across there. Let's say you don't have a roller, but you have all the ingredients. There's some chili powder there. Um, I like extra wasabi, make it spicy. Got some chives going on there. Some kimchi going on there. A little bit of sesame seeds. I like sesame seeds flavors. And then I'm just putting on the spicy tuna. Right? So this is the convenient way of just making sushi really fast. Got that right there. And that's why it's called a hand roll. Just roll it up by hand, just like that. See, like it goes right into a cone shape. And there you have it, sushi hand roll. Again, there was some soy sauce. Quick and easy. No issues. Good quick lunch. Don't need a roller. This? What is this? Sushi roller? Ah. Overrated. <laughs>